Welcome back. I think this is the last one. Let's do this. So let's correlate everything together. Rocks, fossils, geologic time. How is everything telling us everything? Um, so correlation is the process by which we're matching up rocks in different areas. Um, with, uh, not only by um, uh, lithostratic, uh, lithostratigraphic correlation, where we're matching over the, the rocks themselves, but also time stratigraphic correlation, um, matching up the, the time equivalents as well. Same rocks, same time, so that's correlation. For example, um, imagine these two, so this layer of rocks is the same as this layer of rocks over here, and the core, what the correlation of lithostat, lithostratigraphic units, such as formations, uh, traces rocks laterally across gaps. So that rock over there is the same as that rock over there. Just litho, rock, stratigraphy, layers. That rock layer is the same as that rock layer over there. It's lithostratigraphic. We can correlate rock units based on, the, again, the composition. Oh, that's sandstone. That's sandstone. The position in a particular sequence. Oh, it goes limestone, sandstone, and limestone, sandstone. Okay, so it's right there. And also the, the presence of distinctive uh, distinctive bets, telltale bets, individual kind of strata. Um, like, oh, there's a, a, a key uh, black limestone. Oh, same over here. Kind of matches up. Kind of matches up because sometimes when we're looking at rocks that are separated by great distances again sometimes those faces kind of pinch out and so you know we have this sandstone layer kind of sandwiched in between these two shale layers but over here we don't have that sandstone that's because it kind of pinches out so we have to keep that in consideration as well when we're looking at lithostratigraphic units and matching everything up Sometimes the same rocks aren't there. What about uh, time equivalents? Because most rocks of a regional extent are time transgressive, meaning they form at different times at different locations, we can't rely just solely on lithostratigraphic correlation to demonstrate um, time equivalencies. You know, like when we have marine transgressions and regressions, those sandstones are spread out and form at different times, vertically and horizontally. So example, the sandstone, some sandstone in Arizona is correlated with similar rocks in Colorado and South Dakota, but the ages of the rocks vary greatly. So early Cambrian here, but middle Cambrian as we go into Colorado and South Dakota. Same rock, but different time. So the most effective way to demonstrate time equivalency is through time stratigraphic correlation using biozones. Biozones are coming back again. I mentioned we won't talk about it too much, but here we go. Um, for all organisms now extinct, the, their existence, that we can mark two points in their, their existence for sure. The time they originated, like, oh, this is the first time they originated in the, in the geologic record, and the time of extinction. This is the last time they were there. So we know these two for sure. So one type of biozone, the, the range zone, is defined by the, the geologic range, the total time of existence, of a particular fossil group. Now, a fossil group might be a one species or a group of related species. Uh, most useful of our fossils, when we're looking at particular fossils, fossils uh, which we'll call guide fossils, not all fossils are the best, but if we're looking at fossils to help us kind of match up and correlate rocks and time and, and etc. Um, the most useful fossils to do that are easily identified. They're geographically widespread. We see them in a lot of places around Earth. Um, but they live during a very relatively short geologic time range. They're widespread ge geographically, but in the geologic time, they've only they're only around a little bit. That helps us kind of pinpoint time frames. So again, those are called uh, guide fossils. Um, for example, let me move me a little bit here. And so let me show you some good and bad examples. So the Brachiopod lingula, it's not useful as a guide fossil. So we can find fossils from the Ordovician all the way into the Quaternary period. It's too long. We can't narrow things down. However, um, uh, Brachiopods, uh, uh, Brachiopod. Atrepa and trilobite, well, let me get this one, 
Paradoxides. Um, those are really good guide fossils because um, they have very short ranges. They have very short time ranges. So if you find uh, uh, this type of trilobite fossil, you know you're dealing with rocks from the Cambrian period because only eight really existed there. So the shorter the time frame, geographically widespread, easily identified, those are the best um, guide fossils. Oops. So you match up a number of these guide fossils to get something called concurrent range zones. Um, you're plotting and overlapping ranges of two or more fossils, usually guide fossils, with different geologic ranges. So you're looking for ones that are a little bit different short time uh, frames, the better, uh, but that overlap. And this is probably the most accurate uh, method of determining time equivalence. So let's say you're looking at this rock layer and there's five different fossils. Even though you know they all existed over these different ranges of time, they all overlap in this particular area. It's concurrent range zones. So they all overlap in this particular area. Same thing over here. Even though it's a different rock, right? Um, it contains all of the same fossils that overlap at the same time period so we can match those up time wise there's other um uh besides strictly fossils there's other uh physical geologic events short term that we can use to help us kind of date um particular uh, uh rocks um so but they usually have to be short duration um uh events so we can use that to determine time equivalence, such as distinctive uh, lava flows that would have formed over a short period of time. Um, so, okay, this, this volcano kind of erupted this particular lava flow at this particular time. Uh, ash falls that may cover large areas and are not, res uh, um, not restricted to a specific environment because they can be kind of widespread. Um, another one that I didn't put on here that just popped in my brain, large asteroid impacts kind of the same as ashfall if a large asteroid impact hits a lot of materials blown up into the atmosphere and kind of settle down that's a short duration physical event as well and remember if we're talking now about igneous rocks what's great about them is with lava flows or ash falls remember absolute ages can be obtained from igneous rocks using radiometric dating right think back to our previous unit where i talked about that um, so if you have lava flows that are interbedded with sedimentary rocks, that's the most useful way for determining absolute ages of sedimentary rocks. Because remember, sedimentary rocks, we can't really get an absolute age of radiometric dating of when the sediment was deposited and when the sedimentary rock formed because the minerals that make up sedimentary rocks, you know, existed elsewhere they're just broken down pieces that got cemented together so the time of the of of the sedimentary rock that we would get from it is not the formation of the sedimentary rock but it's the formation of the metamorphic rock or igneous rock where those minerals originated from um so here's an example um so here's some sedimentary rocks that are originally uh, regionally metamorphosed metamorphic rocks we can get dates from as long as they're in uh, an open system so 750 million years here's some ash fall here's a lava flow so then we can determine we can't absolute date these but then these sedimentary rocks we can say you know what well they had to exist or they had to be deposited between 675 and 750 million years ago same with these we have a lava flow here ash flow we can kind of narrow this down to between 600 and 675 million years ago um, oh, what happened there? So, uh, again, kind of a, some, a different way of going about it. Again, um, absolute ages for sedimentary rocks determined indirectly using igneous or metamorphic rocks. Another way to do it is the principle of cross-cutting. Um, according to the principle of cross-cutting relationships, igneous intrusions, like this vertical dike here, must be younger than it rock, the rocks it cuts through. These rocks, these rock layers had to be there first in order for this vertical dike of magma to kind of cut its way through. So an absolute age for this uh, igneous dike can be calculated, um, which gives then a minimum age for the host rock, meaning you, you know that these have to be a particular, they have to be at least X amount of years old, and then additionally, you can figure out a, a maximum age for any rocks deposited on top. So at a minimum, these rocks have to be as old as this thing, 
as a maximum, they have to be as old as, as this dike. So again, another way to figure that out. So uh, let's say you have an intrusive igneous body like a batholith, which is a large igneous pluton um, that you can date, igneous rock, or this igneous rock dike that you can date. So if this is 180 million years old, well, we know the sedimentary rocks have to be um, uh, at least that old because uh, if there's a non-conformity here, it's an erosional surface. This was ground down and then sedimentary rocks were deposited on top. And then the dike came through, and these layers had to be there for this dike to cut through. So putting these three things together, the age of the dike, the age of the batholith, and the fact that there's a nonconformity, we can then uh, constrain these sedimentary rocks to between 150 and 180 million years old. So yeah, so indirect dating uh, is is kind of the biggest way to go, especially with sedimentary rocks. Well, only with sedimentary rocks. So um, again, accurate radiometric dates can be picked out from igneous rock, like ash falls, lava flows, large intrusive plutonic bodies, as well as metamorphic rocks under the right conditions. Um, what else? Um, so once you have absolute ages of igneous and metamorphic rocks associated with fossils, then the absolute ages of these sedimentary rocks can, or at least a small time frame, can be added into the geologic time scale. Uh, additionally, we can figure out when organism, organisms lived, and in some cases it's a very short time frame geologically, a million years or so. And again, if we're finding these kind of types of guide fossils in, in sedimentary rocks, then we can you know, put accurate, absolute ages on some of these things. Uh, a great example is, um, uh, I'm not up on my Latin lately, but the fossil baculites residii. Sounds pretty good. Um, so this particular fossil, uh, as an example, this is a stratigraphic sequence in, in uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. So this particular fossil um, has evolved through time, but the, what did I say? Baculides residii, is that what I said? Um, that particular fossil is only found in the bear paw formation and is part of the snake bite member, but it's bounded on either side by this volcanic ash layer, so then some volcanic eruption. Uh, happened and maybe the same volcano or another one happened. So we have this igneous rock layer that we can date to between about 72 and 73 million years old. So then we can just accurately say that if we find that if, when we find this fossil in other places in a sedimentary rock, it's got to be 72, 73 million years old. So, um, and that's all thanks to then again, though, those absolute ages of ash because that's igneous material. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's it. That's a shorter unit. As again, we get further into the semester, um, you know, these first chunk of units really uh, gives you a lot of background on things. Um, let me make me bigger. Why not? Um, uh, uh, these first four units and even this one gives you a lot of background in things. And then as we start to get further and further in, um, I'm not guaranteeing that these lectures will get shorter and shorter, but we'll, we'll have more of a more of a focus. Okay, so. That's all I got to say. Um, yeah, until next time, I'll see you around.